Today we'll be taking a look at Rhino Linux, which is a newer Ubuntu-based rolling release distribution. Rolling release essentially means that you get the latest updates and features for individual pieces of software without having to upgrade your entire operating system. Arch Linux and Gen2 are two of the more popular rolling release distros, and you can see that the current release of Arch is listed here as 2024.12.01 which is really just the date that this particular build of Arch became available. Now, if we compare this versioning scheme to Linux Mint, for example, version 22, codenamed Wilma, is the latest version of Mint, but this has nothing to do with the year 2022. It's just that version 21, codenamed Vanessa, came before it, so logically, 22 would come next. Mint is what's called a point release distro, where every new version or subversion, like Mint 21.2, is going to bring software upgrades over that previous version. And typically, you're just going to get security updates if you update your packages without upgrading your OS. Ubuntu is also a point release distro, but its version numbers actually line up with the year and month of its release, just to be a little extra confusing. Now, going back to Rhino Linux, its latest release is 2024.2, which I take to mean as the second version that has come out in 2024, but this versioning scheme might end up changing in the future since Rhino Linux has only really been around for a little over a year now. Rhino Linux is available as both x86 and ARM builds, I'm going to be installing the x86 version today and showing you guys some of this distro's cool features. One thing that I want to bring up really quick is it appears that Rhino Linux doesn't have a BitTorrent option for downloading. They just have these direct downloads from SourceForge. Now, it makes sense to serve the HTTP download this way instead of taking that bandwidth burden upon your own servers, but torrent downloads are still typically faster than downloading from SourceForge. It doesn't cost you anything except maybe a few gigabytes of initial seed bandwidth for each new version that you come out with, but you don't even have to do that from your web server. You could just do that from your home computer. The BitTorrent protocol is also arguably more secure than HTTP, and above anything else, torrenting ISOs is just the Linux way of doing things. So it would be very nice to see them add a BitTorrent option for downloading Rhino Linux in the future. But anyway, let's get this baby booted up in a VM and take a look at it. So here we have the Grub Boot menu for Rhino Linux. I'm gonna go ahead and select the first option to try or install Rhino Linux. And I really like this splash screen that we have here or this loading screen with the Rhino logo and spelled out. I mean, it just looks so nice. I'm really glad that they actually put a little bit more effort into the eye candy on Rhino Linux, at least a bit more than a lot of other Linux distributions seem to do. I mean, obviously you can rice this, you know, you can change it to be whatever you want, but if you're targeting, I guess, beginners or maybe people who aren't necessarily gonna go through all the customization themselves, it's nice to have that, right? Like it's it's eye candy. I get it's like judging a book by its cover, but if a book's got an interesting cover, more people might read it. Okay, so it looks like my desktop is just about done loading up. It loaded up pretty quick, and I think part of the reason for that is this unicorn desktop is actually derived from XFCE, which is one of the more lightweight desktop environments and also one of my personal favorites. And I also like that Rhino Linux was able to auto resize my desktop to fill in the screen of this VM. That doesn't always happen, but it's really nice when it does. Now let's take a look at some of the default software that's over here in this left bar. First, we have uLauncher, which first and foremost is an application launcher. So if I type in FIR, I can see Firefox Stable is listed here. I can start typing in THUNAR for Thunar to see my file manager or the Thunar preferences first. But in addition to launching files or launching applications, you can actually search through files and directories on your PC. So 
If I start out by typing forward slash, we're taking a peek into the root folder here of this system. And I could type in dev to take a look in that dev folder to see the folders and files inside of there, so on and so forth. If I wanna take a look at the home folder, I would type in the tilde and then I can look in downloads and there's not gonna be anything in there, but you get the idea. There's also a shortcut built in for searching Google. So if I start by typing a G and then I can start typing in Rhino Linux, this is going to open up my default browser, Firefox in this case, on the Google page with that search query filled out. There's also a shortcut in Rhino Linux in the uLauncher for searching Stack Overflow. So if I type in SO, you see that we get that preview to search Stack Overflow. So really handy if you're doing software development or any type of similar technical work. And if we click on this gear icon here, this is gonna bring us into the uLauncher preferences. And here you can change the general preferences, but you can also create your own shortcuts right in here on pretty much any website that's gonna have a search function in it similar to this. So obviously the possibilities are endless here in that shortcut function. So uLauncher is a really handy program to have. I also really like that there's a clear distinction between your web searches and between searching for something local on your system. That's something that the developers over at Microsoft that develop the start menu should take some notes on. Going down the sidebar, we have the application grid, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. We have the virtual desktop switcher, which lets us switch between our virtual desktops. There's four configured by default, but of course you can add or subtract these as you wish. And then we have Firefox stable, so that's pretty standard on Linux systems. We have Thunar, the file manager, which is also pretty standard as far as XFCE systems go. And then we have VS Codium, which isn't as standard. I actually can't really think if I've ever seen VS Codium installed by default on a Linux distribution before. Now, there is a good reason for this. If we take a look at the rhinolinux.org homepage and we scroll down to the bottom, they say that developers are going to love Rhino Linux with their vast software repositories, Packstall, which we'll talk about more in a little bit, and Codium pre-installed on your system. Now, I'm not sure if this is a typo or if people actually do call the VS Codium program Codium for short, but I like it because Codium is like the copium for using VS Code on Linux. Now, let's take a look through the application grid. The first thing that stood out to me is how many different terminals come pre-installed on Rhino Linux. You've got Xterm, UXterm, you've got the XFCE terminal, you've got the terminal emulator, which is basically just a shortcut to the XFCE terminal, and for good measure, you've got the XFCE terminal settings shortcut in there as well. And you're probably gonna end up installing another terminal too if these are not your favorite ones, but hey, since this is a developer OS, go wild. Install all the terminals. Going back into the application grid, we've got Celeste. So this is a cloud backup program, uh, and it actually lets you connect to a few different clouds. So it supports Dropbox, Google Drive, NextCloud, OwnCloud, etc. We've got, of course, Mousepad, since this is an XFCE distribution or it's using the XFCE desktop environment. Uh, we've got Thunar, of course, we've got Time Shift. So this is a backup and restore program that has a nice GTK GUI. So that makes it uh, really user-friendly, pretty easy to use. We've got, of course, a Task Manager. We've got Kvanta Manager. So this was kind of interesting to see too, because usually you would think that this would be on a KDE desktop environment, but it does support multiple different desktop environments. So this lets you change themes inside of your, uh, I think, QT application. So we click on change default theme. By default, we're using the KV Rhino Dark, which looks really nice, uh, but let's just change it to like KV Flat temporarily. Uh, use this theme. And so you can see it changed it to kind of this uh, 
more dark gray kind. This actually doesn't look too bad either, but I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the AV Rhino Dark just because unless we go through and change the theme of everything, then some text on certain windows might be difficult to see. And, you know, I wanna showcase Rhino Linux the way that the developers of it intended for it to be used. Going back into our application grid, um, let's see, we've got the VS Codium. Ah, so we also have the MPV media player. So I think this is a really nice touch too because, well, obviously it matches the purple, right? The purple distro has to be using the purple media player, but I think some people, especially people who've been using Linux for a long time, might actually prefer MPV over VLC. I know initially, I preferred VLC, but then kind of over time started preferring MPV instead. Okay, so let's get started with installing Rhino Linux. Of course, it has a GUI installer like a lot of those just works Linux distros. I guess we could call this a just works distro for developers. Okay, so we're gonna use English language, uh, English region and time zone, uh, English US keyboard layout. And we're gonna erase the disk. Of course, you would wanna do manual partitioning if you're gonna install this alongside another distribution or something like that. I'm gonna use swap. And that's fine for the name. And I'm not gonna bother with encryption or anything like that. And install now. Okay, so we'll come back when this application is finished and take a look at Rhino Linux once it's installed. All right, so we're greeted by that loading screen once again. Put in my password. And once again, my desktop auto resized to fill the screen. All right, so we have this, uh, I guess, little setup wizard that it wants us to go through. And I think this said hello, and it's just going through bunch of different languages here. Make your choices, the wizard will take care of everything. It's pretty cool. I wonder how many languages it actually has here. Oh, it looks like they forgot a few fonts and <laughs> language packs. Oh well, I mean that's a pretty common bug. Happens to the best of us. All right, let's start. And for our package manager, we can configure if we want to do see flat packs or we can also do the flat pack beta channel we could do nix which is probably what i would do if i was going to end up using rhino linux as a daily driver we could use snap we can also use app images let's go next all right containerization so this is another really handy thing for a just works developer distro um, Docker is probably the containerization that I would use and QEMU as well. That's actually what I'm using for the virtualization here to run Rhino Linux in a virtual machine. And let's see, extra settings, Nala's an alternative front end to apt, featuring a beautiful UI. Yeah, I guess that's pretty handy to have. Uh, GitHub CLI, Redshift. This is something that's pretty cool too. It um, you know, automatically changes the Color temperature basically makes it like redder or oranger as it gets later into the day, I guess helps to not throw off your circadian rhythm, make your eyes hurt late at night. And I'll put in our password to install this. All right, let's finish up these changes here. And we're all done, but we gotta reboot one more time. but it's worth it to see that loading screen. All right, and now we've got Rhino Linux installed. Now, one of the big selling points of Rhino Linux is Packstall, which is basically like an AUR, but for Ubuntu-based distributions. There's a lot of applications that are available on Linux and some of the more obscure ones are just not going to be in your distro's repos because they're a smaller team of people. You know, Even if it's a larger team that has a lot of money backing them, there's only so many applications that they're actually gonna be able to use and verify themselves that they work on the distro. So these community repos like Packstall and the AUR can help you install those more obscure programs more easily 
on Ubuntu or Arch-based distros respectively. So if I were to do a sudo apt install signal desktop, for example, this is almost never available in any distros repos. And as you can see, they can't find the signal desktop. But if I do packstall s signal desktop, you can see that it is available and they even have the beta branch of it as well. Uh, same deal with Brave. So if I were to do, um, Brave should be good enough. Yeah, you can't find Brave, but if I do this with Packstall, boom, we've got Brave Browser. We've even got Brave Browser Nightly. So you get the idea. Some of those more obscure programs you can install through a community repo like that. Um, and there's also a wrapper for Packstall, Apt, Flatpak, and Snap in Rhino Linux called Rhino PKG. And this is basically the real package manager, the package manager wrapper that you would be installing if you're daily driving Rhino Linux. And I think actually when you go to update uh, Rhino Linux using the uh, like GUI updater, see if I can uh, find it. I think it's maybe here under your system. Yeah, if you do the system upgrade, this is basically uh, running the same thing just inside of like a GTK window here. So yeah, this is really, really handy to manage all of the different package managers that you have on your system and all the different packages through them all at once. So yeah, overall, I think this distro is pretty neat. I mean, if anything, it could definitely serve as a good stepping stone towards using an Arch-like distro since it's already Arch-like in the sense that it's a rolling release and it has Packstall, which like I said, it's like the AUR pre-configured on the system already. And that this Rhino PKG wrapper should make managing all the different applications that you have access to through Packstall, Flatpaks, etc., much, much easier. Links to Rhino Linux will be below in the video's description. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and buy some merch from my website, based.win. 10% discount when you pay in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.